everyone. So today, this is a, um, a Mercer's sw uh, Tungsten Swing Caddis, is what it's called. Um, but it's, um, I kind of think of this fly as like an attractor um, soft tackle. You can see the green microtubing back in there. So, I'm going to tie one for you. So I'm going to tie it on a MLO 53, a moonlet hook, and it's this is a uh, size 12, but it's um, 2x strong, 1x short, MLO 53, and I have a moonlet uh, tungsten, black tungsten bead. This is a size 2.7, and what I'm going to start with here is uh, some white nano silk and 12 watt. And if any of you tie on Norvice uh, bobbins, uh, you're probably familiar with wrapping your thread around the arm. Um, but you can see I've got it wrapped around twice on this stuff. Um, Nano silk is so slick that sometimes you can't keep the tension you want with just one wrap. So I'm going to try to start my thread right here in the center. I'm going to do nice flat wraps and I'm going to bring this back. Uh, beyond the bend because I want my um, I want my microtubing to show a little bit I'm going to come down the bend to about right there and I'm going to come back up I'm going to keep my thread nice and flat okay go ahead and take my tag piece off Okay, and this is just olive microtubing. I'll grab it right here on top. It really doesn't matter which. There we go. And then I'm going to get a couple of good wraps in, and then I'm going to pull it really tight. I want it to be real flat. My thread all the way back. where I started and I'm going to throw a half hitch in right here where this thread started okay and now I'm going to I'm going to do touching turns I'm going to pull this stuff kind of tight for the first couple of turns You don't have to use your rotary. You could definitely do this by hand. I, I like to use rotary on camera because then my hands aren't in front of everything I'm doing. Now I'm starting to loosen up my tension quite a bit so that my microtubing gets fatter and thicker and it forms a little bit of a taper. It's not, not a ton, but some. I'll bring my microtubing right to where my thread stopped. I'm going to go ahead and get one wrap over, pull it tight. Couple behind, couple in front, and then stretch it really tight. Okay. All right, now I'm going to throw another uh, half hitch in my white because I'm going to get rid of it. So now I'm using black. This is uh, nano silk. I mean, not nano silk. I'm sorry. Semperfly's black waxed. It's a wax thread. It's in six odd. If I had some eight odd, I would be using that right now. But um, I'm out and I'm waiting for more. So I'll bring my black thread right up to where my white thread stopped. Get rid of the waist, and then I'm just going to cross. My bobbin, a couple wraps behind, this nano silk is slick so bind it down, 
Okay, and then I'll um, go ahead and get my waist off. Just open the tips of my scissors and push. Okay, so that's enough of that white. All right, so now the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my thread right back to where the body stopped. And I'm gonna take some natural CDC. Okay, so just one feather. And I'm gonna just grab it by the tip and stroke everything else back. Okay, and then I wanna tie this on with the curve going over the top of my hook shank. I'll pull everything back. And I'm gonna tie in a couple of tight wraps. I'll bring my tip back, do a couple more wraps. Now that's nicely secured. And I'm gonna throw a half hitch in again and then come in and take this tip out. All right. I'll use hackle pliers, again, just so my hands aren't always in front of the camera. Okay, and I'll go ahead, let's see, let me, uh, I'm going to wet my fingers a little bit and get these fibers kind of trained backwards as much as I can. I'm only going to do a couple, three wraps here. I just want to try to get one right in front of the other, and don't worry if they're not poking in the direction you really want them to go because you're gonna you're gonna get all that stuff worked out and I'm also gonna cut them so all right so that's about three wraps Bring my thread back in tie off my stem One thing nice about this wax thread, it's really grippy. You don't really have to worry about material slipping out. Okay, now I'm going to take everything, stroke it back. Okay, so now get all your fibers back. And come in with your scissors and I want to cut these off square about the length of my body the tubing okay. looks good tighten up all this these loose butt ends so the six out builds up a little bit faster than I would like um, all right, now I'm going to dub. I'm going to use just some brown ice dub. And I want to build just like a um, thorax here, but it's just going to be um, just like a dubbing ball that that bead is going to come back and rest against. Okay, so I'll do a little bit of, little bit of dubbing. I want my dubbing ball to be as at least as tall as the bead and maybe just a little bit taller because I'm going to brush all this dubbing out. Okay, so I'm going to come up and all my wraps are going to be right on top of each other. All right, so what I like to do here is I like to go ahead and tie off my thread. Um, I think on the original pattern, they just jump the bead. And you probably uh, wouldn't be able to see that thread on that black bead anyway, but I, I like to just go ahead and tie it off, bring the bead back, and start my thread right behind the eye. Kind of dam that bead backwards. Okay, so I've seen people try to cover the bead with the dubbing, and I've seen other people just put a dubbing ball in front and then um, uh, brush out the dubbing and just kind of make it veil the bead. And I think that's what I'm going to do as well. Um, it's kind of hard to get your dubbing to wrap over the top of the bead, and when you do, a lot of times the bottom of the bead is exposed and the top of the bead is covered, and... This might be too much dubbing, but we'll see. So I'm going to bring this bead back really tight. I'm going to 
get my dubbing wraps right in there. I'm just going to try to get it up on the bead if I can. But don't worry about it if you can't. Okay. So now your dubbing is on there and it's all nice and tight and it's kind of clumpy looking. But that's okay because you're going to brush it out now. So I'm just going to create a little bit of a pad up here to tie in my, my soft hackle. I'm going to take my little Stonfo brush. Alright, that looks just like it's supposed to. Now, I'm going to take a partridge feather. I've already got it prepped. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Also with this one, you can take the tip back, wrap over it. That'll secure your partridge in a little bit better. I have a friend named Sam that says anytime you get a chance to double a material back and tie it in better, you should do it. So, all right, let me bring my thread forward. Okay, grab it with your hackle pliers. I'm just going to let it hang. Moisten my fingers again, and I'm going to try to get as many as I can trained going backwards. Um, now you know you can always uh, bring your thread wraps back and Just enough fibers to get this done. I want to try to get them brushed back as well as I can. And tie off your stem. Okay, and then I'll just come in and whip finish. I want to build a nice little black head and then I'm going to hit it with UV which is going to make it shiny. It's almost going to look like a bead itself. Try not to crowd your eye. So this, this is where 8 dot thread would have worked a little bit better, but um, we'll get it done with the 6 dot. Alright, take a look at the bottom. Make sure that my eye is open. Okay, and then um, I like to use this uh, Solar Res Bone Dry. Um, I like the little brush for sure. I can get the uh, UV right where I want it. Okay, and then to make it look nice, go upstairs and uh, get your wife's toothbrush and uh, you can uh, brush out all this soft tackle and get um, all the fibers that are clumped together. You can get them spread apart. Um, the key to this is to take the toothbrush up and put it back before she notices it's gone and uh, you'll be fine. Okay, so that is a Mercer's Tungsten Swing Caddis. Um, a little messy, but um, like I said, I look at it as a um, as a uh, soft hackle stimulator. Um, I've got that little piece of stem. Oh, that's better. It'll fish well. It looks good in the water. That uh, brown ice dove is kind of like a, a hot spot, sort of. And um, I think that... Uh, they're fun to tie and I uh, think they're fun to swing so you can also tie it on as a nymph because you do have that bead on there and it will sink so uh, tie some up and give them a try. Caddis are coming soon.